to this update this morning. I hope you're doing fantastic. So we'll be talking about what's happening across the Caribbean and there is that frontal system which extends into the region as well as a surface trough ahead of that front and that is helping to enhance the rainfall for parts of the northeastern Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at the forecast going toward uh, northern South America. We see some thunderstorms popping up in parts of southern Venezuela, near the Pacific coast of Colombia as well. By the way, there is quite a bit of dust which has entered the Caribbean. So you may find that it is very hazy where you are or uh, you may be experiencing the adverse health effects. So as it relates to the uh, Saharan dust forecast, here we're looking at it for this morning and we can see all that dust extended across the Eastern Caribbean blanket in the Lesser Antilles, the ABC Islands, and even toward the Virgin Islands as well in parts of Northern South America. And as we're going to be heading into tomorrow morning, some of this dust is expected to still be loitering around the area, uh, Puerto Rico, much of the Lesser Antilles, ABC Islands, even to parts of Panama as well, and across Northern South America and the Atlantic going all the way to Africa. But as we head toward the middle of the week, the forecast here is calling for a decrease in all of this dust across the region. So there may be a break in it for uh, much of the eastern islands of the Caribbean, but some of it may still manage to move a bit further to the west towards other areas such as Costa Rica and blanket more of Panama. So that is it. The Saharan dust is around and it's likely to remain around for the next two days or so before there is a decrease in the quantity of it. And then going on to the rainfall forecast for today. So we can see here that it gets a bit colorful on this map. We're seeing all these shadings of greens, these yellows, oranges popping up as well. And uh, as I said, there is that trough ahead of the cold front that is bringing some increased rainfall to parts of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So some heavy downpours are going to be possible as we're going to be heading through today. And uh, speaking of green and orange, today is the local government elections in Jamaica. So many persons are going out to vote and it would be good to carry our umbrella just in case of a downpour. But nothing very substantial is expected across the entirety of the island. As we head toward Hispaniola, parts of eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, similar story. There could be some showers passing through. And then as we head towards the Caribbean coast of Central America, areas such as Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, even towards Honduras, the Bay Islands, and near the coast of Belize, there may be some shower activity as well. But further inland and for the Pacific coast, we're not seeing where much is expected. Cayman Islands, parts of Central and Western Cuba, most of the Bahamas up to Florida, same story, much not expected as we head through today. For the ABC Islands and to the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands, a few showers could pass by. Nothing crazy though, but uh, most of that rain is going to be up to the northeast. And then for Northern South America, Colombia, Venezuela, likely to remain active in some areas, but for the Guyanas, not as active with uh, any widespread substantial rainfall activity today. Now, winds aren't going to be crazy across the region, maybe a bit windy in parts of the uh, Windward Islands, ABC Islands, and even offshore parts of the Northern Caribbean, such as Cuba, Hispaniola, and as we head into the uh, Southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands as well, some of those winds may be up to 15 knots with higher gusts, similar story for the Cayman Islands, but uh, elsewhere not expected to be very, very windy. We haven't had a major system make its way through. However, just offshore the Caribbean coast of Colombia, we can see some of those blue shadings, so that is where the, uh, the strongest winds are likely to be found as we head through today. Now, models continue to hint at that area of increased moisture by the middle of the week, but what is more interesting to me is what is expected for next week. And it is not just on one model, such as just the GFS, where we're seeing that expected area of low pressure. It is also on the Euro model and even the Icon model. So GFS is showing all of this moisture presented by those shades of greens and those spots of yellows as well. And this is as we head into Saturday, so the end of this week. But not a guarantee that this is going to be developing into anything. Euro, on the other hand, is showing a low pressure system offshore the east coast. We'll definitely be watching for that one. But as for that uh, system out there in the open waters of the Atlantic, we see more of a broad low pressure area here. And then as for the icon model, icon is also showing that we may see that trough as we head into early next week. So we're definitely seeing that low pressure area and also an increase in moisture offshore the Bahamas. So of course I'll be keeping you guys posted on what to expect, but as I've been reiterating since covering 
uh, what the models have been showing for that uh, from last week until now, there was absolutely no guarantee of development. And typically we don't see development this time of year, but those waters are anomalously warm and could actually aid in some development. We could see subtropical cyclone formation long before the official start of hurricane season, as long as other environmental conditions are conducive. But as always, I'm here to keep you guys posted on what is expected and that is pretty much it for right now. I really do hope you found this update to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so and remember to always be weatherwise.